Hey everybody, this is Triptych. I have another Fleet Ops game for you today. This is a 2 vs 2 in stock Fleet Operations 3.27. On the left hand we have Martok and Shadow de Grey, and on the right hand we have Nessie and Mighty Master. The map is Nebula Stream, this is a 2 vs 2, and I'll talk about the map in just a minute. We have Martok is Martok, naturally. Shadow is Takarosia, so we have two Klingon players on the left, and on the right um, this is Nessie, right? Yes, Nessie is Feds, and then Mighty Master is Dominion. So this was a Alliance's game. They got their positions, and some of them got their races randomly. I wasn't really paying attention. So this is an interesting map. Some of these maps have a very uh, circular symmetry, or another way to put it is there's definitely roles built into the map, sort of. Um, in that this player here, his natural expansion is behind him between the two players. This is a very safe expansion. And then he also has this little option here he can go for, or he can really harass. He can try for these. I mean, there there's a lot of options in this game that are sort of equal in value. Whereas this player, the left and right players, uh, their expansion is in a bit of a forward position. It's near their home, but they're pretty much going to have to take this. Um... And it's interesting to try to think about, uh, in the past I've thought about the way that they line up. In the end, it really doesn't make too much difference to your play style. Like, I was thinking, you know, if you had an expansion, maybe you'd be focusing more on bigger ships. You know, bigger, slower ships. But there, there's trade-offs to that too, because for example, if this position goes for bigger, slower ships, well yes, his expansion is safe, but he doesn't have a forward position to move from, so the slow speed of his ships is going to make it hard for him to attack. Whereas, you know, you could say the exact same way. This guy, with a forward position, he's forced to take this, and if he were going large yard for most of the races, except for Romulan, uh, you know, you'd get a small yard at your home and a large yard at your expansion, and so that way you both, both are protected and you can project power. If you compared it to a small ship strategy, well, in a small ship strategy, you still get two yards usually. And that's the key That's the key of fleet operations, and specifically Triptych's mod that I've been working on, is to make it so that every race gets two yards, so that every race can react to every single situation, so that a player in this situation isn't forced to go one way or the other. So, let's actually look what these people are doing. Um, our Martok Klingon Martok has his field yard with no upgrades, which means we're going to see a battle yard over here. Totally just called that. So um, I'm expecting Sangs, but on, this is a slightly larger map for a 2 vs 2, so we might see something fancy like Vorcha. He's getting his ally to repair up right away, just in case an ally needs to come defend him here. And his mining. And yeah, there's the armory. So just by foregoing any small ships and foregoing that first Sang, uh, he's going to have his Vorcha... He's going to have just a little bit of an economic advantage with the Vorcha. Which, because sometimes you get into that situation where you could get a smaller unit, you know, just one ship while your tech building is producing. Like, especially as Romulans, for example, if they were going Laval, they need their Laval or Griffin, they need their research institute. They could build one Generix or one Rien while the research institute is going. But then that ship will always feel a little bit left out. It may not have the same speeds, it may be a little bit poorly matched with your other ships. So if you can afford it, if you're really not worried about being attacked, it's nicer to just forget that and not even build anything until you get to the ship that you want. Shadow is going a very different route as Takraja, you know, the other thing to mention is Martok gets a cost reduction on this yard, so it makes it easier for him to do this. And now he's actually surprising me. He is going Sangs despite the armory. I wonder if this has something to do with what he's scouted. And okay, it, it definitely does. So he's probably realized this large yard is going and he was like, you know what? I'm going to change my build up. Even though he wanted those super fast Vorcha, um, he's going to stick with Sang, something that can handle larger ships. So anyway, yeah, Shadow has his Cavorts. They're Takrosia Cavorts, so they have higher damage. And I'm expecting... Oh, he does not have a yard here yet, but I, he, he must want to really soon. He just... Okay, his money got blocked by trying to go for his expansion economy and his Cavorts at the same time. So what's the, what this is going to do is he's going to have the Cavort firepower and his economy is going to get up pretty quickly, which is going to give him an advantage. The downside is, um, oh wow, he even built a Starbase Kaduj. So yeah, the downside is if he were to be double teamed, 
or struck by a superior force this early in the game, he wouldn't be able to repair here. So, like, this position would be vulnerable to early raiding parties because the miners can't get out. But I think he's he's compensating for that very well by getting this early firepower. And also, he sees he has a Federation opponent, and he sees that he's not in any immediate danger. Now, what is going to happen in about 30 seconds is there's going to be a warp in. And, oh man, Nessie's going to be really tempted to send this warp in straight to this expansion and start tearing it down. Um, and we'll see, I mean, Shadow's all the way here, over here, so maybe that could happen. You know, maybe we'd see the warp in kill off some stuff here, and then Shadow ships come in and, like, kill off the warp in as it was trying to go home. You'll see Nessie does have a proxy yard out here, which is very interesting. As a, as a convention, our Fleet Ops players don't build yards in open space very often. We almost always go near a yard or some, near a moon or something. Um, but there are strategic places sometimes where you're like, you know what, it's totally worth it. I may not be getting any resources, but especially in this position where he has his rear expansion, and Shadow's a bit surprised to not find this occupied. Normally this is such a safe place, which also makes it dangerous when you're going against cloakers, because the cloakers will go back there and hit you. But, here we go. The warp in is going to arrive at this expansion, and Shadow is not getting a battle yard because it would have been so difficult for him to save up a thousand dilithium while building cavorts. So he's getting the field yard just for the repair, and it's with perfect timing because this warp in comes here. They might kill this miner just because he did throw in two intrepids, but not if they switch fire. They have to stay on it. Here we go. Okay, it's going to die. Um, but if Shadow chooses to bring these other ships over, then he won't lose any more. Um, and you'll see there, this cavort, the cavort's not in any danger. Although it does take a very long time to turn around here and get into this yard. Um, yeah, the cavort's not in danger. Now it does look like this firepower is going to be overwhelming. Oh, little Miss Micro again, you gotta hit it. You gotta hit the miners, that miner's already safe here. And you see Shadow is running all of this stuff down, he just sees this now. And this platform is really going to secure this position. So, okay, they did get another minor kill. That, that was a bit of luck there on Nessie's part. And now he's retreating. So Shadow does have the firepower, but he's in a he's not in a place that he likes to be. Because there's this yard, and if this platform... Nessie does not have the kind of money he needs for this. And he is keeping up his ship production very quickly, which I think is important. He could get this turret. Okay, he's going pulse platform. Or maybe even sensor. No, no, he did spring for a full phaser platform. So, this area is his. Like, there's nothing Shadow can do. It's very depressing for Shadow right now. Um, even though Shadow has these really nice cavorts, and he has so many of them, he's not going to be able to take down this position, which basically means as long as Nessie has this, and he's threatening Shadow's expansion, and Shadow needs this, Shadow really can't go raiding anywhere. The only upside is the fact that Nessie is not paying attention enough to go get this expansion. Because that's what Nessie needs to do. Now that he's firmly cemented this area, He's got his ships. He does need to keep microing, so it's going to be a lot of mic multitasking. And he's hoping to do it stepping his turrets from one position to another. But this is way too far out for this turret step, and I think Shadow's going to punish that. Um, as soon as this repair is done, he's going to have four cavorts and a Kaduj. I don't know if he's lost a cavort yet. Despite these Federation ships, he could still get a snipe on that platform. Um, he is going to kill the centaur, I think. He needs to move them, though. They'll give move orders, not attack orders. Here we go. Now he's going to kill the constructor, or at least chase it off. So, this all depends on Shadow, because these ships are so weak defensively, he should probably mix some Quebecs into here. But this is all about him having enough firepower to kill off these enemies. And you'll notice his, his mining did get stunted very badly. He needs to switch these off of Tartranium and onto Dilithium, so he can keep up that ship production, because he needs to build ships faster than Nessie. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, um, did you think I forgot? Mighty Master is getting super heavy supply mining up with his expansion. It's a safe expansion. Um, over here, Martok has gone on over here, and he has gotten quite a lot of Sangs, I imagine. I don't know where they are. Oh, he sent them to assist. That's not the best thing, because now he's getting hit by V13s and bugs. These are stock bugs, which means they only have the 11 defense. But they're also cheap, which means they make incredibly good raiders against undefended positions. Um, this position... Oh man, he's got this battle yard, but it's way out here. Um, these th these battleships might get in there and attack all that. So that's risky, and... Uh, 
Where did the Sangs go? He transferred control. Okay, so they're really hoping that Shadow can break this. Now here, here's another turret. This will probably be a sensor platform. But by giving these Sangs to Shadow, Shadow now has an overwhelming force and he's getting his heavy weapons platform. But Martok has very little right now. He just gave away three Sangs, and that's, that's nothing to laugh at. I hope he's getting some sort of compensation. And these, oh, this is a very deadly combination for the Sangs, because the Sangs can do incredible damage to these battleships, but they will only deal it if you specifically target the battleships. If you give them move orders, then they will attack the bugs by default, and you really do not want that, because they have such a high miss chance against the bugs. And if you give attack orders on the battleships, then you can't move your Sangs, which as you can see here, he desperately has to keep the Sang moving so that it can get back into the yard. Um, it's just barely within reach, but if any of these bugs decided to ram... And this one might go down. You see so many torpedoes missing, but the engines did get lost. And this Sang here is probably going to die, just because... Oh, that was close! But just, you can't underestimate the time it takes for a ship to turn when it's getting into a yard. Because you might be totally able to get over there, but then when it's turning, it still dies. Okay, so here we go. Um, there's quite a repair queue. Shadow is losing some ships due to this phaser platform, and he cannot cloak out here. I don't think this is where he needs to attack. I think now that this heavy weapons platform is up, he's safe and secure. Like, this turret walk is not going to be able to make it, because the heavy weapons platform will kill off any turret that would be in range, unless Nessie techs up to torpedo turrets. So I think Shadow needs to just, for like, leave the Sangs here, but take the Cavorts. Oh man, he lost a lot of Cavorts there. He used to have like five, and now he only has two and another one coming, so that's bad. I don't know. I didn't see too much there, but I don't know, I don't know what he killed here. It looks like he killed an Intrepid or two, but it wasn't enough. So at this point, Shadow needs to leave the Sangs here maybe, but have the Cavorts cloak out and go kill this before it gets defended before Nessie has time to build a, a platform and a uh, yard here. He needs to go raiding that mining. Um, here you see a very bold move on Mighty Master's part. He, I wonder if he didn't realize he had that one there. He's going to lose this to Shadow. And let's see, I mean the Sang count is just going to keep building as will the V-13 battleship count. These V-13s like, we're talking maybe 500 dilithium for a Sang, and like 650 for a V-13. These are really, really cheap battleships. That's what they're designed for. And, oh, okay, it looks like these two Sangs have transferred back to Martok now. But these these battleships, even though the Sangs do the extra damage, you know, 43, 36 versus 25, 20. The Sangs may have a counter on there, they may be slightly faster and have longer range and everything, but the V-13 stats are just way higher. So what was that that just died? I did not see. Um, you see that Sang can't even make it. Now they have the cloak detect ping. Um, the special Dominion technology, there's the sensor platform and they've got that researched. So these Sangs can be detected at any time. He's, he's really wondering whether he should do this engagement or not. It looks like Martok's not going to engage. Okay, there he goes. He goes. Good thing, too, because he was about to get cloak detected anyway. He might be able to kill off this bug, which would be very good for him. He really doesn't want to mess with this crap anymore. And, okay, by... Not only is he sitting... Not only is this important because he's sitting up on top of the yard, but also the turn time is low. You see? His ships don't have to turn very much to get into the yard. And... Okay, they haven't killed that bug, but they have chased it off, and now they can start dealing their damage. And these battleships are slower and shorter range, so the Sangs can follow after them and get infinite kills. Like, he can basically kill off at least one battleship during this retreat. But I'm going to go over here real quick just to take a look at this. So we have a pulse platform, which is going to be killed by this heavy weapons platform, you see. Um, oh, maybe it isn't. Um, so this, this platform is going to do great. I think this Intrepid's going to die. Yep. So that heavy weapons platform is really going to hold this down. But, I mean, the turret creep is continuing, and you see this turret uh, isn't actually going to be able to be fired upon by this heavy weapons platform until it finishes. I think Shadow needs to pull back. I think he needs to just not fight this. Don't fight under this pulse platform, dude. Um, just go home. Go home and repair. Keep your ships alive. Your heavy weapons platform can do some lovely damage. 
Oh, and he, okay, he got that repaired, but as soon as this platform finishes, the heavy weapons platform will take it out. So you really need to keep these guys back as much as possible, which is hard because they're short-range ships, and they will automatically kite into the enemy. You see that? He didn't order that. His ships are just attacking on their own, and he has to constantly, constantly babysit them and get them to go back. That vort, that cavort is finally going to die. And because this heavy weapons platform attacks multiple targets, all of these ships are going to dilute it. And there is a torpedo turret. Uh, Nessie built this thing. I think the only reason he built that was to get the torpedo turret tech. And now, oh, Shadow has to cloak these guys and stop them from going in, because this is terrible. All of his ships are getting kited in. Uh, he did kill something, but now all of his, his ships are going to die here. Like, he's going to lose that one. I think he lost another. And you'll notice this is a Risner torpedo turret, so it fires on a single target with artillery range. So I think the heavy weapons platform is actually going to win this fight. However, man, Shadow is taking so many ship losses, and you'll notice all of Nessie's, Nessie's economy is going through the roof. Because all of his ship losses are warp ends, and he really doesn't care. Oh, goodness. Meanwhile, the Sangs have completely shut down these battleships. Because, I, like I was saying, it's, it's the absolute factor. The Sang, the, the battleships have higher stats, but the Sangs are faster and longer range. So, whenever these battleships decide to run away, the Sangs can just chase them all day long. And I don't know if the prototype died or if it was sent back home to retreat. It could be that it's dead, in which case, these queued V-13s are the only ones that can be built. Until he gets another prototype. And another prototype of Mighty Masters is getting kited out of there. It might die, it might go down. It does have a dodge chance. Okay, and he caught it, and he's going back home. So he's going for S2s. S2s will be very deadly against the Sangs, especially now that Martok's already committed to them, because the S2s do extra damage to long range, and they're small ships, so the Sangs won't always hit. And you see, still, still after all this time, Shadow's kite ships are still getting kited. Shadow has just, his ships have just been devastated horribly. He really needs to send his cavorts over here and just kill this mining and not even worry about his home. Um, because remember, this this platform has more than twice as much shields as it has health, but this one has the same amount of shields and health. So actually this torpedo is much lower on health than this platform is. But here's the focus fire attack. I wonder if Shadow needed to get a second heavy weapons platform or something, because you see, you see, the damage it deals is very high. But it's spread out over all these turrets, so it doesn't have the ability to chase them down and to actually get kills. Um, these cavorts, yes, they do extra damage to medium range, and their damage is okay. But you really gotta watch out. And since he's consistently having to take them back to repair, this is very bad. So now, now, as long as these ships are kiting, he might be able to kill this torpedo platform. But you see, Nessie can just build another, and I think we're gonna see another torpedo platform. Okay, just a phaser platform, but... Shadow's ships are constantly going to be have, have to be microed. This has uh, a blade of armor plating on it, which is almost unfair. It makes it take half damage from short range, but you see the Sangs have come in. These Sangs had to show up now, or else Shadow was totally screwed. But at this rate, this heavy weapons platform might survive. These Sangs are just going to be able to shell the crap out of these platforms. He is losing a station in exchange, and if he doesn't cloak this Sang immediately and get it out, it's going to be sensor pinged by Starmaster Prodigy. He's going to lose this yard. He really needs to cancel all his construction so he doesn't lose that. And But at the same time, he is doing very well. He's killed the torpedo platform and the phaser platform. Shadow's going to lose a cavort here. But this pulse platform is going to go down as well. And after this, I think this position will be a whole lot more absolute. They finally caused some resource damage to Nessie, who's just been sitting on his resources, not worrying about anything. Um, he did buy supply, which he is now losing in all of, the, all of these warp ends. And these Sangs, man, Nessie probably needs to pull back. It seems like he would have the advantage with the, the sensor platform and the turret. But the Sangs are continuing to just shell the crap out of all these ships. Another Intrepid here may go down. Just because the damage here is outrageous. All of this is gone. But it's, it's, an, it's an okay sacrifice for Martok to make. And okay, this this sensor torpedo or sensor nebula might go down. Oh, as well as that Excelsior. You see the the supply is just getting stripped off of Nessie. Sometimes when Fed players lose all of their warpins, 
they don't even lose that much supply because if they only had like 50 supply to begin with they can't lose anymore but he okay he's canceling construction now you saw he had 150 supply when he started and now he has 90 and that includes canceling built ships so just the supply cost that he has lost is incredible and so his intrepid production so Nessie is just getting walloped because he built in such a forward position and I, I still won't say it wasn't too cost ineffective because over time the number of ships that he killed of shadows is just ridiculous this by the way um, only the special if special forces extension on the field yard can get allied repair and I think that's why that's built there I don't think he's planning on getting Vickler Rogs although he might um, I think that's only for the allied repair and you see this this heavy weapons platform is going to be able to recover to full health now when it was in such big danger so now um, let's see yeah Star Master Prodigy has actually cut out his uh, production altogether and this is an interesting thing about Dominion people say that Dominion are very inflexible because it's slow for them to switch over their tech and in some ways it is but at the same time if you play them carefully if you build your prototypes quickly then it's not that bad because you can see now he does have two yards going consistently he's had his supply mining up for quite a while now and uh, between those two yards he really is like he's gonna be able to get so many S2s and these Sangs are already countered even though we got some beautiful ranks on them and actually you get that awesome uh, yeah 60 area damage and also 60% uh, damage against destroyers which you know what I think these are cruisers so they don't he doesn't do the extra destroyer damage but <laughs> they killed off a little scout there so ironically uh, these cavorts are short range and they have pulse damage primarily which means they will do extra damage to these S2s because the S2s are weak against short range so um, you'll see there are a lot of strategies and counters in this game but I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again the number one strategy in any multiplayer game where there's multiple people is two on one it like you can have the guy countered you can have a wonderful force but two enemies on one guy is probably going to win and you'll see how that totally happened to Nessie which is an unfortunate side effect of having these battleships on Star Master's side is well and also the turrets the turrets could never come over and help Star Master and Star Master's battleships were so slow that it would have taken them a while to get over here and they could have come over here I guess if Star Master had left immediately to go could to go down here and help his battleships might have arrived before that yard died but the turrets would already be dead so you see now what's going to happen is uh, Nessie has very little to send over to Star Master and Star Master is going to be hit by two enemies and his his wonderful S2 fleet that will counter the the Sangs is going to get killed by the cavorts and that is just you know Teamwork is such a big deal, and it? so you'll see that the right-hand team had these powerful econ strategies, and the left-hand team is going to win through the power of love and friendship. Another thing they could have done that people don't think to do very often, but is a possible strategy. You see, I think Nessie was really busy working on the actual game, but Nessie could have given all of his supplies over to Mighty Master before that fight began and then had Mighty Master give them back and that way he wouldn't have lost any supplies for all those warping deaths but like I say he was so busy microwing he, he probably didn't have time to do stuff like that so you see we have Sangs that are uncloaked Cavorts that are cloaked they're probably going to take some pot shots at this yard to draw out the enemy first comes the AI move which is automatic then comes the player moves when they deliberately come after you this monsoon is a big problem because it'll tank such a crazy amount of sang fire but oh they're going for it completely and the cavorts are decloaking but where are they going you can't no don't kill the monsoon oh man these these cavorts really really need to kill s twos there here we go and they're getting they're getting focused fired the sangs are trying to stay on the outskirts while the cavorts and a vorcha i don't know who that was from just got taken out so, oh, and the Sangs withdrew. They left the cavorts in the middle of it. So I take it back about the love and friendship. You guys suck. 
Um, you got your love and friendship is terrible, guys. So these Sangs need to fight a running battle now, because they cannot cloak. If they do cloak, they'll get sensor pinged. You see, a large number of S2 are dying, and this isn't so bad uh, for the top team. Here's another vet Sang in a second. There we go. Now there's three veteran Sangs. This isn't so bad because all they really needed to do, the top team, was clear out that cloud of S2s. Because once the cloud is gone, the Sangs can just do whatever the heck they want. Okay, and there's another... Martok has been creating Vorcha, but they're not going to do that well. I mean, yes, okay, they're highly resistant to the S2, and that's why he's building them. But I think it was good, it worked out just fine to have uh, Shadow's Cavorts take out the S2s and let the Sangs just keep doing what they do. Because now you see, oh, you got to chase uh, all these repair lines and not getting them out. So the Feds are going to escape when they probably shouldn't have. But you see, now the S2s are all wiped out, and they're going to come more. Like, he's not going to stop building S2s, but the moment the S2s were out of the picture, the Sangs could really chase off everything else. So, I mean, Shadow lost everything, again. Um, I, I think he's sticking with his production, but he did just buy supply, which cost all of his Tritanium. And since there's, there's two Klingon players here, they're both going to... Okay, he's... <laughs> I see, so... Shadow bought supply and gave some to his friend. But both of them, their first supply buy is 11,000, or 1,100. So just buying supply is going gonna, is gonna to get really difficult for them. While the Federation, I mean, they lose supplies on Warpins, but the Dominion, they mine them. And honestly, it's kind of funny, but Mighty Master can do, for, do with some more mining, more supply mining. He's only got one supply miner for this. He could have a second one. And these, okay, these both have two, I think. Yeah. Um, he could get some more and give some to his Federation ally. And here Shadow's finally gotten the idea to get some cavorts down here, but two isn't enough. Like, he can kill them when they dock. If you pick them right when they're docking, you can get a kill. But other than that, once these guys all move over, you know, the, S the Excelsior 2's getting out, he won't be able to get kills. So I, I would strongly suggest to Shadow that he gets some more cavorts down here and knock this out. So these Sangs, they are probably going to kill this large yard. I mean, I'm wondering, this fleet is turning around and the S2s are very deadly because they're fast and he has cloak detect to kill the Sangs. So maybe they need to run, I don't know. It's going to be a close one, but I think he needs to go. He needs to go now. And he should have brought backup. More importantly, he should have had scouts on this Dominion team to see where they were going. Now, the longer this battle goes, the better... Oh, wow. Well, I don't know why they're running this direction. Um, he is going to lose his Sang. Now, it isn't that bad to have a running battle with these because these Sangs... Oh, wow, a veteran V13. Um, he doesn't have its special, which is the whole point of being a veteran. Um, the veteran ability makes it so that the, the excessive strike, which normally hits three targets, will now hit 12 targets on a veteran. And there's the decloak, by the way. And he did get three kills because Nessie was his occupied elsewhere. But um, these Sangs, the veteran Sangs, have their 60 area damage ability. And when all three of them trigger at the same time, their burst damage is incredible. So I don't know why he's going here. Does he think he's invincible? I mean, okay, there, there are no Dominion ships nearby who can use the sensor detect ping. So, I guess really he's just doing a good job of kiting. Um, but, man, he's got to be careful. Okay, you see, okay, his damage is crazy high. Um, he is taking out so many warpins, so many other things, because of that unexpected, well, what you know, 60 times 3, that's 180 splash damage every... this one. Every 9 seconds. So every 9 seconds... 180 damage. You'll see. Boom. Just gone. And he might get this ambassador, which would be a really nice kill, but no, he won't. And there, you see, even though this guy, he has that mischance, but these guys are dealing way extra damage to destroyers. And they've got that area. So, honestly, even though like the majority of his, of his sayings have died... And one unfortunate side effect of this is all of these veterans are going to get so many kills from their ability 
that the other Klingon ships will not be able to get very many kills, so the other ones won't get rank ups, which he needs for the supply. But the Sangs themselves are going to be just, he's just going to have so much fun with these. You see, a veteran Sang has more stats than a default V13. And it's faster, and it has the area of effect damage. It's just, they're just really good ships. So, um, I am curious as to what these guys are putting their economy into, though. Because, I mean, everybody in this game still has two expansions, except for Nessie, who st still almost has two expansions. He has a ton of Tritanium. I wonder if he's going to put that into some ship upgrades. And you see, he did turret up defensively after his initial push failed. But now, Shadow is getting a battle yard and armory over here. Um, Shadow tends to not like Vorcha nearly as much as the Vutpa that he can get. And here Nessie's getting monsoons. So everybody's trying to find a way to counter the others. Uh, we have monsoons. But the problem is, these monsoons, which would have been a wonderful counter for Sangs in the earlier game, lose all of their effectiveness in the later game, once there's veterans, because... I mean, and this is a very unique situation, because if they if there weren't veteran Sangs, this would be fine. Because, like I say, even though... Well, the Sang is a small ship, so it has a 60% miss chance from torpedoes, and it, ha it takes half damage from, tor from long range, and it has the lowest defense out of this entire fleet, which means the Sangs will auto-target it. So, normally... The Monsoon is a really hard counter to the Sang, because not only does it counter the Sang, but if you already have a fleet that is not very good against Sangs, and you add the Monsoon to that fleet, all of a sudden your entire fleet counters Sangs. So it's, it's, a, it's a really nasty approach. Like, in any team game, I don't like going against Federation as Klingon, because my Sangs can be countered so easily in a team match. However, now our Sangs deal 60% bonus damage to destroyers, which the Monsoon is, and they will deal 180 damage in a splash every couple of seconds. So uh, the Monsoon's actual overall health is, um, if that's 30%, so it has over 180 shields. It has around 200 shields, so it's about 300 health. That means two-thirds of its health is going to be knocked out the moment the battle starts, and its shields will be gone. And then, you know, that's just the first one. If the battle continues for nine seconds, the second one comes in and all the sang all the monsoons die. So now Shadow is finally getting with the program. He's got is that four? Four cavorts, and I think that's enough just about to kill a miner in the time it takes to go from the bottom to the top. It's not enough to kill an Excelsior 2, sorry buddy. But he can kill all these miners off. Um, Martok is looking to engage on his own here. We do see more Sangs. This is a very dangerous engage. Um, these green battleships aren't that deadly, though. Um, they do extra damage to medium range and extra damage to battleships. And they're very slow. In Triptych's mod, I increased their speed significantly and decreased their supply cost to make them fill a bit of a different role. Oh, wow, and you see the Monsoon showed up. Shadow lost one, oh, two, he lost two cavorts because he waited too long to get out. And probably, yeah, these guys all proxy torpedoed to get one of them out. Sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the problem with, with the Breen weaponry in stock is it deals reduced damage to small ships, like the Sang. And since it already has a mischance against the small ships, it makes it so that the damage against the Sang is really, really low on these Breen battleships. So you can see, you can see more and more of those area of effect attacks going off. There goes a the battleship. So, and I don't know if anything died. Okay, there's one Sang out, one Sang dead, one Sang escaping. This guy, Miss Microden, is coming back to the fight, which is bad. And actually, these battleship, these Breen battleships, uh, they might, they might not be good against the Sangs, but they're very good against the Vorcha. And there, that one died. This one is the prototype, so it might go down. He has plenty of them queued up, so that isn't that big a problem. And now you see the monsoons coming in, and they are hard countering. So these these Klingon ships, they can run. They need to keep running. Uh, not entirely running away, but just flying backwards. You need to keep flying backwards so that you can fire backwards at these guys, and they're forced to chase you. And you see, these monsoons, they're doing just fine until the area of effect hits. And like this monsoon, he'll do just fine until the area of effect just goes off and slaughters him. Boom.
Boom. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, two Kavorts. And I, I really am expecting... Okay, he is getting Vorcha, or Kavort. Yeah, Vorcha. And four Sangs, so that's where all of Shadow's money's gone. Five Sangs. Um, he's paused production on his smaller yards. Oh, I think he actually decommissioned his field yard over here. Got about a yard. So now he's got dual yard uh, Vorcha going. The thing about Vorcha is they have two very different roles, which is what I like about them. In the early game, they have the ablative armor plates, which is specifically like the monsoons and the S2s and some of the stuff that really messes up your crap. Um, they're good at fighting that, and they also just have the steady damage. In the later game, though, here we go. There's one. We're about to see another area of effect. That was the special going off, which fires some scattering torpedoes. We're about to see the special... We're about to see the veteran go off again. There it goes. Anyway, in the later game, the Co the Vorcha is all about its special, which is one of the most deadly uh, specials in the game. Um, let's see. It is just a 10-second random subsystem disable, which isn't that significant. But you start to load these up, and you start going against high-priority targets in the late game, you see these these veteran sangs are are tanking. Um, quick uh, death going on there. The thing is, normally ships will go for the lowest defense on the enemy side. However, in the case of veterans, that does not apply. They'll just be like, "Oh, these are all sangs," and they'll shoot who they feel like. That was the S2 prototype, by the way, that just died. Um, but the thing is, when there's a veteran. Enemy ships cannot distinguish between a veteran and a brand new ship. So once they start shooting at the Sang, like this Sang has 531 shields, and it's almost all been taken out. You see, he could still cloak out if he had to, though. Um, so the veteran ships are very good at tanking damage, because the enemies will shoot at them, and they really won't be effective. All the shots that were fired at that veteran Sang were almost wasted. And now there are four... Four veteran sangs. That is 240 damage in an area every nine seconds. That is just ridiculous. So I lost nursing. Oh yeah, so two rolls for the Vorcha. Roll one is early game resistance to um, short range, and basically they play like warbirds. You leave them near your yard, and you don't push out with them very much because as long as they're near your guard and they can cloak well, they will never die. Like, there's there's really not much that can kill them early. And they have enough hit points, and they have... Even though they're... Even though you do them based on their hit points... Oh, where's a... See if a rank one... User joined your channel. Hey, are you in the game? Yeah, I'm observing. Can I'm actually recording right now. Can you please tell me that it's Chi Chi, or tell Mighty, because he doesn't believe me. <laughs> well, we'll let it go just a little bit longer, because I'm enjoying commentating. Anyway, though, you see this uh, Vorcha, even though I was just saying it's more of a defensive ship, it does have 38 offense to 30 defense, so it can still hold its own and it can actually get kills. But as I was saying, the later game application is the special, which disables subsystems on key targets. You get that on a sphere or a battleship, and you use it with five ships at once, and they just they lose weapons, they lose engines, anything really, and they're done. So that's the value of it, although you'll see that neither of these players have actually gotten that special. Jerks. Yeah, go back to your channel, Nessie. Tell me it's Chi Chi, or what do you want to see? Well, I mean, it I do must think... must have, like, five of the times of our ships. Honestly, it's just the fact that they have four veteran sangs. Yeah, it's also that. That's what I'm telling him. They well, are doing area damage. If Mighty wants to keep on fighting, though, you might as well let him go. Let's let's let them have an epic final battle, and then we can call it GG. Anyway, though, in either case, you got to get out of my channel. User left your channel. <laughs> so yeah, um, as you can see, Nessie is just getting horribly, horribly messed up. Even though he has plenty of resources. He's just... The Sang damage output is stupidly high at this point. 
And there's even though these monsoons are the best counter that they have, they're still not that good. Um, Star Master Prodigy has switched over to B5s, hoping that those fighter craft will tank some torpedoes. And we shall see. I, hopefully this will be the last battle. Oh man, there you see the scatter torpedo go out from the Sangs. And just the sheer area damage on all of this. It does look like a, a Vorcha is going to die. And this veteran Sang getting very low on health. <laughs> but it's it's not going to go down. Like I think I think Mighty Master's entire fleet might have been focusing fire on that one veteran Sang, and it hasn't died yet. So they're they're calling it good. So I'm gonna process this replay and get it up for you guys. This is Triptych signing off.